Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stays. Today we're going to focus on optimizing a visit into the beehive when we're adding a queen excluder. Here we go. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Hey guys, welcome to this episode as we're putting in and optimizing our trip into the hive with a queen excluder. Now there are queen excluders that are I'll just start that part over again. Hey guys, welcome to this episode. Well, today we try to optimize our visit into the hive, putting in a queen excluder. A queen excluder is simply meant to keep the queen out of an area where you're generally trying to store up lots of honey, but not harm any larva or minimize your harvest of honey. So this is gonna allow the worker bees to pass through, but it won't allow the queen to pass through. Now I've got a queen excluder here on this hive and you can see it's right in here. And there's a little notch here, which I also have a notch on this one. And it's designed so that the worker bees now don't have to only go in the entry that's been reduced. In this case, we're gonna add the excluder here. They don't only have to go into the entry that's reduced. They'll now be able to enter on a top level as well and get in that way. So they don't have to go through all the levels of their condo or apartment building. There are excluders that are made of plastic. I find they bunch up with a lot of different buildup from the bees. Very hard to clean, very hard for even the workers to get through over time. I find these ones with a wood frame and metal in the middle are far more durable and to clean off you need a wire brush. In my case mine's pretty tired but it still does the job and you need to clean it up season to season as long as it's disease free you're ready to go. So that's what we've got with the queen excluder. And here if you look over the architecture of this hive that we're going to go into, there's a shallow box another shallow, there's a deep, and then this one actually doesn't have hives in it or any frames or foundation. It's just got a coffee sack pulled along the tightly on the top bottom and sawdust is on top of that coffee sack. So it's an attic meant to reduce moisture buildup in the hive. So I've got an extra box here and this box is freshly painted with a latex based paint. I gave it two coats and then I gave it two days to off gas if there was any odors that would be harmful or concerning to the bees. And inside these, I've got frames that have a plastic foundation with a wax top coating. So they should be pretty agreeable plus strong in the extractor. All I'm going to do now is put this box or another one that's the same dimensions above the excluder. And five of these frames I'm going to transfer below the excluder and I'm going to bring up and swap with them five frames that are the same size that are hopefully full of stores. And over time, as the workers in those full frames hatch, we'll be left with just honey above the excluder and that's our goal. So here we go, let's jump into it. So first we'll take off the top of the box, check that there's no moisture. When there's no moisture, you know you got healthy bees. When I'm getting ready for winter, I always check for moisture first, that my sawdust is nice and dry. I always check for mites, and I did that this week before going in because I wanted to optimize my trip in. If there were mites, I would have to treat them. There are no mites, so I don't have to worry about that. But the third thing I'd be thinking about going into winter is, these bees are gonna have to have in my climate, zone eight on the west coast of Canada, 25 to 30 pounds of honey for the winter to come out healthy. 12 to 15 kilos of honey. So I don't want to take too much, which is why I'm going to do five and five split on which frames are full and which ones are empty going into this, because I want to make sure they have lots of honey for themselves. Now this is just for fun. This is actually not needed because I don't want to go into a deep so much, but I want to just take out the first frame and show you guys what's here and we'll just see what's happening. By the way, up until a week ago, this frame, this, this hive rather, didn't have a queen. <gasps> and now it's full of fresh because the hive on the right had a queen who was laying. I took a bunch of the resources from the right hand hive, well it's your left hand, and I put them in here and in 28 days, these workers that I brought over made their own queen. And now look at, that's all capped brood. That's the result of the brand new queen who's only been laying for one week. Lots of honey around the perimeter as well. So that is gorgeous. Just let the light go in there. There's no drone brood in there either. So it's all workers that are going to hatch out. So that's about as good as it gets there. Oh man, that's nice. Look at that. So that whole box, because it's a big one, is going to have to go further down and have frames above it. We're just going to go really gentle setting it back in and we're not going to mess with the deep box anymore. We're just going to leave it alone. It's heavy guys, like I mean, 
beyond belief heavy. Like no one carries a child who's this heavy. This thing is between 60 and 70 pounds. It's about 30 to 35 kilos, I'd say. I'm just gonna set it down in the back and then we'll get busy on our remaining stuff here. I just always leave it propped up. So here's, oh my goodness. It's just so full, guys. It's so full of life. It's beautiful. Okay. I think what I'll do is just set up a spot. This has historically been a bird bath. I keep a feed container on it and I fill it with water, but there's big rocks inside it as well so that they have a place to drink. And if they were to fall into the water, they can hit one of the rocks while they're kind of treading water and they can find a way to get out. So that's basically a drinking station for the bees. So we're just gonna try to gently go in here if there's a queen and we see here we don't want to disturb her and we want to keep her down at the bottom and get the queen excluder in between her on the bottom and where we want to build up stores up above so here there's lots of paul oh i've got the queen i'm just going to bring her to you right now so you can see her okay i'm coming over i'm coming over here's the queen right there she's right at my finger and she's moving fast you see her she's so much bigger and kind of an amber color she's right there just give you I'll give you a moment to see her going a little closer if I can she's beautiful okay so we know where our queen is great I think what I'll do is I'll just pull out a few of these and I'll put her in this new box where I know she's gonna be safe and I'll put some really nice stuff beside her on each side so that we know that she's got good resources there we go, she's right there. She's gonna be against fixed frames where she can't be hurt. Awesome sauce. In fact, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch this one so I know that she's on the bottom below where we're going because there's only one queen in the hive. And this is not nearly as heavy as the prior one. So now I can move quick because I know where my queen is. We're just gonna set her down below here she can be right there. It's so nice that you know where the queen is. It's not always such a luxury, but when you know where the queen is, you've got this incredible opportunity position her for success and ensure she's not going to be harmed in any way. Alright. I'm just going to put that back in there. It's going to be four and six because I'm making a switch in my own mind about what I'm doing right now. I'm actually going to put the big box on the top above the excluder and put these ones below it. Making sure again that the queen's nowhere near in any danger. There we go. And we'll just put these frames. Ah. I want to move this to the middle a bit more. There we go. They always put less priority on the perimeter and more priority on the center. So I want to just kind of support that mentality for the bees and put the, uh, the resource rich frames into the center of the hive so that it's easiest for them to protect their queen and make sure everything's happy and safe. And as it gets into winter, it's really critical for warmth as well. So now that we've got this going on, we're already almost done what we came to do. So now we've got an even mix of six and four. We've got our queen excluder here ready to go. And now the big surprise for me is that there's so many rich stores in the biggest, deepest hive. I'm going to put that on the top and then as the brood hatches out of that, it's all going to be honey. Mm, truly beyond belief, guys. Okay, so we've got our excluder in between. 
I'm going to double check that I put the entrance facing up, yes, so the workers can come and go right from there. We're good to go. We'll just buckle it up. Put on our attic for ventilation and for moisture control with sawdust in it. If you hadn't caught that earlier, there's just a coffee sack that I pull tight across the bottom so it breathes and let moisture rise, but it's stapled on the inside. You can check out other videos I have about building a hive attic. There's no bees inside the attic. We're good to go. Hey everybody, thanks very much for joining me on optimizing our trip into the hive to place a queen excluder. I think we had great success and we've now got queen excluders on both hives. This one has a medium shallow box, this one has a deep box, and there's lots of resources getting prepared by the bees. We all win. Thanks for coming. <laughs>